Hello, this video is going to be about the secret sauce of uh, this toolkit, which is uh, the Dispatcher Hub, which is a custom blueprint component, which you can find in Blueprints Core. And here is the Dispatcher Hub. Uh, now, this works uh, similar uh, in some ways to event dispatchers in Unreal Engine, uh, but has uh, quite a few differences as well. So, what it is, is a way for uh, actors to subscribe to certain events that happen uh, so that they will listen for a specific kind of event and when that event happens uh, they will trigger some custom behavior uh, and actors can also call on an event uh, in the event dispatcher uh, which signals to all um, actors that are listening to that event that uh, they can act so that was a bit abstract, uh, so I'll give more of a concrete example. So the thing with uh, roguelike deck builders or this genre or really many, many types of board game-like games which have complex rules with a lot of interact, uh, interactivity between the rules and where the introduction of new cards or new status effects or something can uh, kind of affect all the other rules in the game. Uh, in some ways, uh, so you need to have a structured system for this and the dispatcher hub is set up to be this system uh, to give an example of such an event um, That is used in this toolkit. Uh, let us add a uh, artifact uh, To our test map here. So we are in the arena map currently um, and we're going to the uh, to the game instance which you can find in core uh, the game instance is here uh, and then in the starting artifacts here, you can add an artifact. And we can add, uh, if we find the artifacts uh, data table, we can add the broken shield artifact, which is a good uh, straightforward example of how the uh, dispatcher hub can work. So let's hit play and see it in action. So now that we added this starting artifact, we have the broken shield artifact up here. And you can see from the tooltip, what it does is that each time your hero attacks, gain two armor. Um, so we can see that in action. If we attack, we see that our hero gets two armor and continues to do this. So this is an example of uh, one kind of actor, which is here, this artifact, which is listening for an event. It is listening uh, for the attack event, which happens every time we use an attack card. Uh, and each time that happens, it triggers an event which is stored within this artifact, which is to give two armor to our hero. Um, so this is one example of the Dispatcher Hub and how it works. Though uh, this is used for all kinds of things uh, all over uh, this toolkit. Okay, now to show this in practice, uh, let's build something using the Event Dispatcher system. Uh, so for this, uh, I'll just go to the content folder and now just for the tutorial and we'll create a new blueprint here. I'll create an actor and we'll call this uh, BP uh, Dispatcher Hub Tests. And I'll make a simple example here of an, uh, uh, of an actor which increases in size every time we draw a card. Uh, so not something that will be useful in any game, probably, but uh, it will demonstrate how this works. Uh, so first I'll just add a static mesh component to this um, so we can visualize it. And let's just do a simple sphere for this. Uh, which there's always there's one big one and one small one in the engine. Is this a small one? I think so. Um, okay, so we have our static mesh. Just put this into our scene, like so, and see that we have it floating here. Um, and now, so we want to be to subscribe to uh, a an event in the Dispatcher Hub. We want it to be that uh, we are subscribing to the Drawing of Cards event. And each time that happens, we want to increase the size of this static mesh. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so we can use begin play and here we can bind to the dispatcher hub uh, and there is a uh, function for that which is globally accessible uh, which is bind event uh, to global dispatcher hub so there are also 
uh, dispatcher hubs that are not global, uh, that are uh, tied to specific actors, but we'll get into that later. But this is the global dispatcher hub um, for events that might be of interest to all actors in our scene. Uh, so we want to subscribe to some event and we want to subscribe here to the draw event and you can find all of the events that are used here under events so there are quite a few ones to choose from uh, in this case i'm going to look at the events that are under action this is interacting with the action system so uh, to understand that fully watch my tutorial on the action system but what this basically means is that events that are under here are events that are called within actions. So they are queued and they are part of visualizing what is happening in the game. While the other events, they're more related to gameplay code. Uh, so for this, every time a draw is actually shown, so when the player sees that a card is being drawn, uh, so this is event action draw, and then we want to increase the size uh, of this static mesh. So we do this and we want, and which object do we want to call an event on when this event is called? Um, when this uh, dispatch hub event is, is triggered, we want to call some event and we want to do it on ourselves. Um, but we can't just add an event to any event here. We need access to a specific kind of event. Uh, so for that, we go to the class settings and we add an interface which is called BPI event holder. So this is an interface that an actor needs to have uh, if it is to run these dispatcher hub events. Uh, when we have added this, we have access to the uh, play event, I mean run event uh, dispatcher uh, event here. So after we have added this, now this event is going to be triggered every time uh, an actor in our game is calling on the draw, uh, the action draw event. Calling events I'm going to cover a bit later. Uh, but we can test this out now by just doing a simple print. So we'll just print out hello. And if we now hit play, we will see that every time we draw, we get a hello. A hello here. Maybe it's easier actually to not have when we draw, but instead we'll have a post use card or when we use a card here because it will be simpler to see. So we are now subscribing to the use card event. So every time I use a card, you're going to see hello printed up here. So if I use this card, you see hello. Same when I do the next, when I use the next card here. So yeah, fairly straightforward. When this event happens, uh, we are running this event. Now you don't have to just bind a single event. It's possible to bind multiple events to the dispatcher hub. Um, and if so, then you want to know when you run this event, uh, which event is actually being triggered. Uh, so at the, we can use the bind multiple events to the global dispatcher hub here and we can add more of them. So we can uh, both then the, let's see, the action use card, and we can also bind it to draw. Um, and then we'll set this as the event holder and delete this old one. And now we can print the name of this event. And we can see when we're drawing, you get all these action draw and when we use it, you get action use card. So generally what you want to do, if you have multiple events like this, then you will have a switch on this events tag and you can switch and do different behavior depending on the type of event that is happening. Um, so you will add some events here. I'm searching for action to find them again. So use card and for the next one, we will have the action draw. And I'll remove the default pin. Even if you just have one event that you're subscribing to, uh, it's the code becomes more readable if you add a switch anyway, so you just can see uh, which event uh, that you are triggering. But now we can do two different things. So when we are drawing, we can print then draw. And when we're using a card, we can print use. 
And again, if we hit play, now we are seeing draw. And when we're using a card, we're seeing use. So you can use this to have a single actor subscribe to many different kinds of events and have different kinds of behavior, depending on what is being called. Okay, and finally, let me set this up like I said we were gonna. So we're going to resize uh, this mesh uh, depending on the event that's happening. So let's um, then set the scale, scale, set world scale. Um, let's see, world scale 3D, we'll get the current scale. And each time we use a card, let's say that we um, we, uh, we reduce the size by like 20%. And each time that we are Drawing a card, we increase the size, like also by uh, 20%. So now if we hit play, we can see as we're drawing, it's increasing in size. When we use our card, it is reducing in size. So yeah, not very useful as a gameplay mechanic. Uh, but hopefully illustrates pretty well how to subscribe to events. Okay, so we know now how to bind to an event, uh, but how do we call an event? Uh, so we can set up a simple example to uh, do that as well. Uh, and for that, we can also, also add a new event. Uh, so let's add a new event that we can call. So if we go back here to our data folder, then you can go to the tags folder and the event tags. And here you see all of the existing um, event tags that can that are used uh, within the base toolkit. We can add more. So we'll add a new one here and we'll just call this uh, debug. And uh, then we'll put this under events. And so this is a gameplay tag structure. So if you don't know how gameplay tags work, I, I recommend uh, looking up the documentation or tutorials for that Unreal Engine feature. I'll, I'll link uh, that below in the description. Uh, but we will put an event here in front of this tag since we're using gameplay tags for all sorts of things in the toolkit. Uh, it's important to distinguish which ones are uh, we are using for events just to keep it clear for ourselves. Uh, so we'll call this event uh, and then I'll call it debug. So now we have a new event that we can use and subscribe to. And now we want to call this event at certain times. Uh, so for that, I will add a new actor. Um, so we'll do a blueprint and I'll call this BP debug event caller. And we'll add this to our scene. And what this is going to do is just to periodically uh, call an event. And we can do that on begin play here. And we'll just add a delay for like a second. And every second uh, we will call events in Global Dispatcher Hub. And we will call then our debug event, effect uh, yeah, event debug. And the calling object will be ourself. We don't necessarily need a calling object, uh, but sometimes we do. If you look here in the dispatcher hub test that we use, you get a calling object input here. So here you can know within this event which event or which actor is actually calling this event now. And this can be useful uh, in many cases, uh, which we'll get to later. Uh, but we're calling this with ourself as the calling object and we're calling the debug event. And we'll just uh, do this again every second. So yeah, not the <laughs> cleanest blueprint. You could do like a tick here and have it be a one second tick or whatever. Uh, but we'll do this just for testing now. So now this actor is just sitting here and calling a debug event uh, every second. That does nothing in itself. Um, so we'll go back to our dispatcher hub here and we will subscribe to this new event, the debug event. And then here, 
we will choose this particular event and every time this happens let's change the appearance somehow let's you know set the material of this, uh, this static mesh here and we'll do a select from the material do a flip-flop so that every second we are switching back and forth between two materials uh, do we have any nice materials we can use here uh, I'll just choose a couple of random ones uh, and let's hope that looks okay and we will hit play and now we are seeing that every second it is switching back and forth between these two materials because of our actor which is calling this debug event every second and this uh, actor here is subscribing to that particular event so that's like the basics of how to subscribe to and uh, call events uh, but there's a lot more to this system uh, of course uh, that it will keep go into and uh, in further videos but that is it for uh, the basics of uh, how this works and i hope that made enough sense uh, this system can take a bit time uh, to get used to but believe me it's it's a lot easier than using uh, Unreal Engine's Event Dispatcher, the default system, which is really cumbersome um, to use uh, if you are using it a lot and in several different places. And it also lacks um, some functionality that is completely necessary, such as being able to control the priority or the ordering in which various uh, events are called uh, and things like that. Um, you can see also in I have this debug uh, button here. Uh, if debug is set to true in the uh, game instance, where you can see all of the actors that are subscribing, that are currently subscribing to various events. Uh, so for the broken shield here, oh, we can look in the global dispatcher for what we just did. Uh, and here you can see for our, let's see, the debug event. We can see that our dispatch, uh, dispatcher hub test to this one is currently subscribing to the debug event. Uh, so this gives you a list of all of the actors that are subscribing to different kinds of events, uh, which is very useful for uh, debugging your game. That will be it for this video.